dreams dream and oh man I don't want my mug on there Good evening and welcome to the City of Helena City Commission meeting. This meeting is called to order. Madam Clerk, would you take the roll, please? City Attorney Jody. Here. City Manager Harlow Schunk. Here. Commissioner Dean. Here. Commissioner Logan. Here. Commissioner Lachlan. Here. Good evening and welcome to the City of Helena City Commission. It will happen. Madam Clerk, would you take the roll, please? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I apologize. Give me just a moment in order to turn off the Here. additional sound. Here. 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 Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I apologize. Um, I am working remotely and it is a far different job to host a meeting on a single screen than it is multiple. So uh, I was on Commissioner Halliday, who I do not see in the meeting. Commissioner Halliday requested an excuse. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor Collins. Here. Welcome and thank you for participating in the City of Helena City Commission meeting. We are pleased to be able to provide this alternative meeting format in the city's effort to broaden public participation. Please be patient as we may experience technical difficulties during the meeting. We welcome your public commentary. Please read the following tips and guidelines for the app usage and your participation. Are there any comments or questions or discussion from the commission? Thank you. City manager in valuation. Manager, uh, Madam Manager, uh, if there's a portion of this meeting that you deem you need to close, please let me know and we will close that portion. A portion of this meeting will be closed due to um, personnel matters. So if you deem a part you don't want 
out there, please just let me know and we'll close that portion. Thank you. At this time, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, yes, Madam Manager. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Thank you for your time tonight. As I shared, I'm going to share my screen and provide a quick set of slides to provide an update to you all on the 16 goals or 16 month goals that you had outlined as part of my recruitment process and onboarding. And then also please, um, as I go through them, feel free to um, ask any questions as they come up and hopefully you're seeing my screen and you're seeing just the slide itself. Do you see just the slide? Mayor? Yes. Hi. Right. <laughs> Can you see just the slide itself? Well, I see two slides, one by the other. One says the goals of the commission for the manager, the other, uh, okay. I see. Hold, please, one second. I'll try it again. I may just have to, because um, it appears that the presentation is, yeah, I'll just, um, Share it this way and see instead. That's a little bit better. Just do it this way and see if that works. Can you see just the slide now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, so, quickly, just a reminder the commission had really, during the recruitment process, identified the 16 month goals and within them the there were 13 and the greatest burden was on relationship building strategy and uh, organization and then last financial and fiscal stability uh, there were really three audiences within those goals which were the mayor and the commission the team and the community and the big picture of um, the amount of work this team has completed is really astounding in comparison to where we started. And um, I'm very, very happy with how far along we are with these goals and in building relationships between the community and the city. Uh, just as a reminder, these were all of the goals <laughs> as outlined. And those that are in yellow are those that um, I believe are just going to be ongoing but that have not been completed yet or um, that will need more attention in the coming years, not just in, in one year. So um, to start, we adopted the budget. We assessed and recommended long-term financial conditions. This fiscal stability study was completed and identified a method for, for addressing those needs that the city has over the next three years. And then assessed and recommended the financial conditions and needs. We're still working on that again as part of this fiscal stability work, but also uh, this conversation around rates, rates that are being charged to residents and studying um, those along with assessments will help us understand how um, the stability of our budget will work out in particular around the general fund and the structural balance that really is our greatest challenge in making sure is clear. And as I shared during the budget, the, the difficulty with our assessment and rates method is that there aren't clear triggers for when an assessment or review needs to take place. And also there aren't clear methods that identify repeatable mathematics. So we wanna really set that out over the next several years through policy and then adopted practice of those communication um, and economic an economic development strategy that strategy is an expectation we are just starting to share out to you all the larger strategy and I'll, I'll touch on that at the end of the presentation here also assess and recommend recovery from COVID-19 as you know we're we're not really at a recovery stage we're actually in probably the worst condition that we've seen here in Helena and our response has been um, an interesting one in that the big picture of the organization itself is uh, doing its best to maintain services 
and at the same time um, ensure that our, our staff are safe and uh, when they're in the building. So uh, as a, a matter of requirement, whenever there are any members of the public or in common spaces, we are masked as employees. Um, as you uh, learned last week, we have had to modify our services within transit. Those modifications have been um, really as, as marginal as we can possibly make them, but at the same time, continue services where we can. And we will hopefully be able to return to full service, but those kinds of methods of agility within the team will continue into the future until we're at a place of stability uh, with COVID. And, I'm not sure if we won't see more variants. And really, it's a good example of the need for resiliency within our community. And it underscores the potential in the future for us to really need that, that added focus of uh, being resilient through another separate, different kind of pandemic itself. And I'll, I'll go into that again at the end of this presentation. Um, moving on, so we adopted uh, an alignment with our budget, the fiscal year 2022 budget, your strategic outcomes. We went through that process at the beginning of the year and implemented it. And then I challenged the team to come up with some wild goals and some outcomes that aligned with your work plan and your budget. Those activities were put together and um, in a work plan. And I'll share in a minute what that work plan readout will look like when it's done. Um, managing COVID-19 is really an interesting question of how, how to manage it other than to manage the, the impacts of it. And that's really what we're working on. And we're going to continue to work on. Uh, we, the commission, uh, we help support the commission's establishment of norms. And uh, those norms, I understand, the uh, Danae has put together a, a larger framed document that can go in the chambers. It shares what those norms are and uh, what they were agreed to be. Um, I've been holding weekly meetings sometimes with the mayor and the commissioners, sometimes not, just depending on availability of all, but those have been very helpful in understanding perspectives and making clear what are the needs of the, um, the commission in particular. My hope was that those meetings would um, continue to increase our um, relationship building, and my hope is that they will continue when we have um, our new commissioners on as well. Routine administrative commission and commission meetings. So the, that why <laughs> those uh, meeting packets, I, I do believe they're getting better. We've improved uh, our method of communication and trying to share to you all in advance the a volume of um, information that's fair enough for decision making. But also, we're still balancing some really technical issues that are being brought in front of you all and asking a lot of your determination um, around specific policy issues. So those, those we will continue to work on. The greatest, as you've observed, has been around um, the complexity with our development community, and we'll be continuing to focus there. Uh, also, the team has done an excellent job of uh, responding to my request that they, they fill out those <laughs> forms that are memos specific to admin and commission meetings so that we can really start to collect the, the history of what decisions we brought forward and the level of detail that we're bringing to you. Uh, we're also, I'm also holding routine team one-on-ones. Every Thursday I have set aside for, for the team and I have one-on-ones and then on Tuesday mornings, I hold a director meeting or on the opposite Tuesday morning, I hold a development review committee meeting. During the one-on-one -on -one, or during our director meetings, we talk through the next commission meeting as well. We talk through any larger items in the next several months, we'll be moving into the next phase of strategic planning. So taking the wild goals and the work plan and moving them into an outcomes-based conversion of uh, resiliency metric, which I'll show you in a, in a minute. Uh, those meetings really are an opportunity for the directors to share, uh, the opportunity for them to share work together and then also strategize through any, any shared issues going on. We also spend about 30 minutes before um, every Tuesday talking through COVID. Uh, at one point we were holding meetings on Mondays and um, Commissioner Logan and Anna Laughlin were attending. 
listening to us talk through any issues within the team around COVID. I've restarted those and we are holding those conversations, mostly focused on what we can do to support each other in uh, addressing some concerns. Um, and that also will be, for example, implementing some uh, availability of testing for employees if they would like to uh, test themselves for COVID before they begin a work, uh, work in, and also any sort of um, um, isolation conversations that might need to take place within quarantining of the team. If we're able to have those more difficult conversations in those 30 minutes in advance and um, our human resources director and our fire team have really been working together along with the city manager's office to come up with some of the good expectations around those. We'll have more information on that soon. Um, the development review team meetings have been very interesting. At first, it's the opportunity and the first opportunity we've all had to sit around and talk through what it is like for a developer to get through our system, what the projects are in the community. And now we're uh, challenging ourselves to move to the next phase, which is actually explaining it to, to the rest of us. So uh, this uh, right-of-way dedication that was just completed, uh, that was just brought through for Vandalay is a good example of um, an opportunity for us to clarify the distinctions. Not all situations are like for like, and we can do a better job of clarifying it, and, and we're doing that. So those are the expectations that I'm, I'm really excited to see the team roll out there. They're proactively, I have to share to you, I think the, the hardest part of coming into the situation that I've had here is that uh, creating, and I know that um, many of the team members out front were excited to have have my um, have me here as their city manager, but it's also time for them to trust me. It takes time to build trust and to um, not worry that I'm intending uh, a gotcha or some sort of negative. So I'm, I'm very proud of the team this week. They uh, work together directly without prompting and without being asked to take a specific leadership. They took the initiative and worked together. So instead of having to consistently assign tasks, uh, they're starting to gel as a team and trust that I'm going to support them. Uh, that I was very pleased to see because it is an indicator of the team actually beginning to work together. Uh, the one I wanted to see, our B, uh, our B herd engagement tool, as you know, Jake shared out the communications plan as well as the um, engagement tool. Those integrate B herd so that uh, we're able to capture any specific comments from the community on primary projects, then also we're starting to implement our herd on the vine, which is the intention of addressing questions that are routinely coming up in the community so that all can see the same response um, and all have access to the same information. We put on the vine inside the updates section and that's been helpful in clarifying any questions when they come up, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone is receiving the on the vine through the updates that you all see. So, um, we're pretty excited to see the be heard used to help clarify those what might be a facts versus fictions conversation around uh, areas in the, in the community. So we can and will continue to work on our engagement and improve our communications tools. And I'm really excited for the next two to three years of work that this team has in improving our communications and increasing our our context around things. Um, the Helena Citizens Council conversation, um, we have routine meetings with the, chem, uh, with the Citizens Council. They feel comfortable, I believe, reaching out to us and asking for team members to attend meetings and provide updates. They're also a really good network throughout the community. In a recent conversation, I reached out to the Citizen Council representatives within a neighborhood where there were questions and concerns over an alley and some redevelop or realignment work. And there's so much opportunity for us to um, flatten some of the conversations by using our connections within the Helena Citizens Council to, to communicate as well. So that's a, another layer of 
uh, networking that we need to be using more and I'll be working with the team to help support that as well. I'm really excited to work with you on the boards and committees. As you know, those boards and committees that you establish, uh, commissioners and that mayor, you appoint with the agreement of the commission, those boards are really um, also liaisoned by our team and the uh, um, efforts to support those are, are pretty large. So very excited to work with Danae and Thomas in establishing um, more consistency across them by way of both their bylaws and also the expectations of the team. And thank you for your support in doing that. Maintaining engagement in our community and our activities. And this year in the budget, we had requested, I had requested a volunteer manager. That position is currently posted and uh, open for recruitment, much like many organizations across the country. Um, the COVID pandemic has added an interesting layer to uh, not only filling positions, but also recruiting the great uh, resignation is, is real. And I wouldn't say it's even resignation as much as participation as well. I, I think there are a lot of people who have reconsidered where they're at. And I certainly did um, in, their, in their worlds and um, reassessing what those, what those focus points are for them. So I hope to see, and I do think um, we will see a change as there's more stability of this COVID variant and the COVID illness itself, where people will feel more secure. But right now, I, I suspect a lot of, of that uncertainty that we're seeing in our job market has a lot to do with just the uncertainty overall. I had a conversation with the team and I've had a conversation with you all. The um, community itself is really in uh, stages of grief, I, I think. And, I, if I didn't put it in this way, it wouldn't bring hope, I think, to improvements, um, that there are stages in, in a pandemic and in any sort of response itself to, to recovery from a disaster, there are stages and phases. So I do believe we are also feeling some of that in our community and some of the response of just agitation and oh, general frustration on top of the change in the organization, um, my being brought on, and the work over time. So there were a lot of legacy issues that were coming out over the last year that I've been working through. The opportunity to bring on volunteers is really exciting, and I look forward to um, getting our volunteer coordinator in here. Most importantly, I really want to see our snowbusters helping those who cannot help themselves during the uh, snow season. And I know our transportation team has already started recruitment and trying to pull in volunteers to help those who cannot um, handle snow removal on their own property. So we're really excited to do that. Uh, strategic outcomes were established with you all. Uh, again, just going back up to this, several items were repeated within the list of actions. Uh, the, the leadership team, as you observed, and many have, um, it was vacant. There were some key vacancies when I started the finance director, human resources and public works, those positions have all been filled. Currently the fire, uh, fire chief is being recruited as well. Uh, we will begin recruitment for police chief and as you now know, our community development director, um, Sharon Haugen has also announced her retirement. So those, those are three uh, positions that are retiring. As I shared with the police and fire chief, I was thankful that um, unfortunately I did not want to lose them, but I was thankful they felt comfortable to retire. Um, I also know that with the loss of our assistant chief Stinson, it's very hard to, and I appreciate that there was the stability offered and that Chief Hagen has, has maintained his leadership until um, we have more time together and uh, I can begin the recruitment. My hope is to have roughly a month under my belt with the new fire chief before hiring um, another police chief so that we can have some time um, in that transition. A work plan and alignment, we're, we're, as I shared, and I'll, I'll go over that summary here in a minute. The work plan is in alignment with the strategic out outcomes and in within our, our budget document. Yeah, the budget document was massive. Um, it is definitely a, a work in progress. It should tell our story in an effective way and um, begin to transition us from 
uh, a base volume of information into actions. And I look forward to watching the team integrate what we're going to be doing over the next several years into a, a conversation with the community on where we're heading and the work that we're doing as a team to, to support where we're heading. Uh, I did hold a director's retreat. Uh, that director's retreat will also be revisited this month in November. That director retreat, as I shared during the six month review, revealed some really important points, which I shared the first, excuse me, parched for one moment. The first of those was that um, there were a lot of members who weren't ready um, and didn't think it was fair for them to be part of the retreat because they were anticipating retirement. And now you know who those are, and um, they are really key positions. So it's hard to build a leadership team in a retreat environment without those three key positions filled. However, we're still going to continue to move forward as a team. And uh, the greatest um, focus that I have really pushed in front of the, the group is this idea of uh, team and the advantage is the, the workbook that I have purchased for them to, to begin conversations and really contemplating what their role is within the team and then within leadership as well. HR has been reviewing our policies and procedures. The most interesting is that um, we had a massive clunk in our process and as you know, the charter sets out that um, I manage the team, including the um, hiring, firing, and implementation of human resources policies. Well, those, those policies are really outdated. The commission also then separately adopted uh, an ordinance some years ago. That ordinance says that I can't um, implement um, items that are not approved by the commission by way of human resources policies. So what has happened is that what are actually procedures in many ways were adopted by the commission and I can't modify those without bringing them back in front of the commission. So unnecessarily, I uh, am stuck in a place where I can't actually modify some of the structural needs that I need to because the check and balance exists now that wasn't there before. I know I, I kind of hinted at that last time, but um, that we talked about some of our human resources policies, but the check and balance is that the check goes in to human resources when I say, hey, I want to evaluate this position and potentially reclassify it. And human resources begins the process of reclassification and then the finance team will also evaluate on the finance side, the implications financially of that reallocation within that process that's where the clunk stopped and the finance team said, hey, wait a second, you actually don't have the authority you think you do because the city in the past has adopted these policies and procedures by the commission, which actually hinder your ability to do that. So good news is we have checks and balances in place because that's exactly what should happen when they're in place. Uh, bad news is that I am actually unable to do some of the things I need to within the organization to realign our team until I bring back in front of the commission a revision to that ordinance. And Thomas and, and Renee have been working together on making sure that the ordinance reflects what the charter shares is the uh, expectation for the commission in relationship to HR policies. So pretty excited to, I know it, it seems a weird thing to say that I'm excited to have checks and balances in place, but I'm, I'm very excited to have those because that means that I don't have to watch it, that the team is there. And that's what you've hired us all to do. Um, evaluate organizational structure, as I shared, I'm, I'm in the middle of that right now. And then the climate survey. Renee uh, received over 200 responses, which is exciting. And the team in human resources is currently reviewing um, those submittals. So I'm very excited to get those results and work with uh, the team really to help address what might be or even rise out of this um, as successes of that climate survey and support them. What um, also has happened within the human resources team is that um, we've started a cross department employee advisory team. And that group is a group of employees that have volunteered and their departments have volunteered them to provide input and help recognize their peers. So the first time that we're actually engaging the team, as I understand it, in citywide conversations around 
um, human resources issues and, and really how to support the team. It's very exciting. Um, and I appreciate all of the departments and the directors for what they've done since I've started here to not only um, translate what I'm asking them to do, but also repeat back to me what they are trying to do in response. And that is uh, the greatest example of, in, in summary, example of what it's been like in hearing me and listening to the team, listening to the community, translating it and trying to return something that meets expectations. I think that is one of the, the most difficult um, parts is the translation. Um, and that's where the, the patience really becomes really important. So I'll stop here, ask you if you have any questions on um, what I'm surmising is the completion and the ongoing needs that um, I've identified for you all of the 16 month goals as outlined and then any areas you would like for me to create um, either um, ask for more clarity on or if you would like more detail on. Comments or questions from the commission? Please continue. Great. Some successes. So uh, these are the successes. I spent some time thinking over what are the obvious and ones that aren't so obvious. So uh, the leadership team supports one another. That is a really great thing to observe. Um, when we were having difficult conversations among each other, each was really supporting each other's points of view and listening. Um, they're solving issues together. They're taking delegated items and collaborating together on how to respond. They're, they're really addressing highly technical legacy issues efficiently. They're using their, their skill sets and bringing in staff members that have other skill sets to support answers that will help the community and support success of Helena. Uh, community, community members are, are reaching to solve problems with us versus us solving problems for them. Uh, this is a new development and it's really exciting. Uh, I have the experience of working with neighborhood groups in my history and the importance of having them engaged in the solution versus the city just fixing the problem. So those, this transition of community members being involved in their solve is really exciting. Um, we're continuing to see trust in key areas and some key areas need to be continued to work on. So. Um, some key areas of success where I feel like we've seen some real relationship building include our partnership economic development agencies. So MBAC, BID, TDID, and DHI, all those acronyms <laughs> are really the foundation for a, a fantastic uh, group of, of um, individuals and community members who really want to see Helena be successful. And the relationship we have now is uh, one of collaboration and we're currently working on some uh, promotional campaigns to narrow in on what Helena is and amongst ourselves share the same kind of messaging uh, that wasn't there before. The areas that we really need to be focusing on and, and this was identified right out the shoot by all of you, which is in the development group uh, and development itself. And so we'll, we'll continue to work on improvements and I'd look forward to that work as well. Um, our relationship with the county is good. I meet with Roger on Fridays. We talk through um, small items and issues. We've also been able to navigate the airport agreement and we'll be bringing to you all the outcome of those conversations. And also we've been able to work through with the IT department bylaws and um, some of the, the oh. my apologies, <laughs> the um, outcomes of those conversations with the county have been really, really forward looking and with our new director in IT, I'm very excited to hear his efforts in particular to uh, address the questions I have around services, beyond just base service. So I'm, I'm very excited on that front. Uh, 
Um, I do believe the commission listens to me and asks for our recommendations and hears what the team is bringing forward and that we've done a better job of communicating clearer what, uh, what we know. Uh, very connected to other cities. They have a really good relationship with city managers across the state and that network is invaluable to me, not only internal inside the state of Montana, but outside of Montana, I have a, a really good network and appreciate their, their input and support. Um, but again, I have a, a lot of cities in my head, a lot of very technical and um, thankfully I've had a lot of um, access over the years to best practices and um, have the opportunity now with the internal network here and then in this region to, to really test out some of those, those ideas as well. So I appreciate my, my friends and peers in other cities. And those peers and friends have also paid off. They paid off in the le um, legislative session. And um, this $2 million grant award for our water and wastewater, the mayor, um, thank you very much, Mayor Collins, for going over to the legislature when we really needed that moment in front of them first to request that the state create that subcommittee um, on behalf of um, not only the city of Helena, but other communities that really need access to those dollars. But then second, when those dollars actually came through that committee, asking for the $2 million that we really need to help move our, our projects forward. So very, very proud of the applications that were put together by the works team. The, they were exceptional in their analysis of what needed, needed to be done. And those serve as an excellent um, understanding for us moving forward to help address what are the, the significant gaps in the water and wastewater needs that we have. Um, as you know, coming here from Colorado, I have a pretty great focus on water service and water uh, availability, not only in quantity, but quality. And um, I spent some a significant amount of my time in um, environmental matters overall. So I'm very excited to see the future of what is our water system and I'm very impressed by the team that has been gathered together. We're again doing a better job of, of uh, writing up information for commissioners and we're hitting deadlines, which is exciting. <laughs> um, we're on trajectory. Our pace is beginning to slow down. And we're starting to spend more time on really complex issues. Our water conservation work is, is now becoming proactive. This last summer, we had to put um, into place water conservation. That was very proactive effort. And this community turned in five days what would have taken normally two weeks for any other community to do. So I'm very impressed with this. this um, citizens of this, this community and impressed by, by the team that helped not only set up the expectations, but communicate routinely. And thank you commissioners for stepping into being part of those videos and helping communicate what were some pretty difficult times in this last summer. And I unfortunately don't see that changing. It's been awfully dry. Last year when I got here, we'd had uh, almost two feet of snow by this time, uh, given that we've not gotten snow yet, and we are at the beginning of our, our winter, and I'm just very nervous about next year. So we'll be, I will be watching uh, our water availability and look forward to having more difficult, unfortunately, um, some more difficult conversations around what we have available. And I know the team has been working on perfecting some of our water, our groundwater supplies, so that we don't run into a situation like this. But we also need to have some more conversations around uh, what's reasonable, water consumption, and what isn't. So I really appreciate the um, Citizens Conservation Board and many of your boards that have helped communicate uh, methods in how to improve water conservation locally. I'm very excited because the um, Conservation Board has been working with our facilities team to also put together a, a garden. That's an example in front of the uh, Justice Center that um, shows how and which kinds of plants can be utilized in this environment that are zero escape and reduce water consumption. So those are all new efforts that um, we're excited to see happen. 
some of the systems that were broken are coming back together. I'm, I'm very excited about that. Some communications have improved and will always need to be evolving and improving. Our relationships with the city are better in key areas again, and the team is accessible, as well as the leadership. They're stepping up. I'm very impressed with the work of this team. They, from the get-go, have been exceptionally responsive and been very supportive. I appreciate their time. Uh, the team members are proud to work for Helena. I think that is something really you should also be proud of. Mayor and Commissioners, I think it's a pretty great place that we all live in, and it's a treasure. And um, we've analyzed how we can improve our stability and our partnerships are our greatest asset. And I know I last week shared to you all our We Are Montana campaign. We'll see if you can see this. If you cannot, I'll reshare it on the screen. Can you see the launch to the new web page? No? Okay. I'll reshare. This is our uh, newest web page. It's an economic uh, development and recruitment tool. It's intended to be uh, the place from which we begin conversations with not only community uh, businesses in, in Montana, but outside of Montana who may be interested in, in being Montana, but really because we are Helena, we are the, the seat of the state, we are Montana. So when you visit Helena, when you have a business in Helena, you are uh, reflecting Montana. The hills of our Great Ascension and Mount Helena are response of, of, what Helen, of what Montana is and our interest in the arts as well as our beautiful vistas and um, doing business here means that we represent all of, all of Montana. So the kinds of economic uh, development activity that we'll be narrowing in on is, is, uh, is on this site identifies the opportunity for someone to move their business here or become a satellite. My hope is that this is the place where someone who visits our, our town can taste any part of Montana, not because we've um, added them um, or moved them here, that they are actually a satellite to their primary location, which might be somewhere else in Montana, that they anybody who visits here can feel what it's like in another part of the state here as well. So um, you can, they would be able to taste any part of the Queen City of the Rockies um, and any part of Montana as well. Anyone who's interested in being a part of our community can get a feeling for what it's like. And as part of that, uh, at the beginning of my time with you all, I had um, shared that Dennis Quaid and his, his group had reached out in hopes of helping us create some economic development videos about what it's like to be a um, business in, in Helena and thankfully I'm so very thankful for uh, Andrea Opitz over at the tourism BID who had shared to me the sovereign group and we really set out together as a beginning of our partnership with with tourism and the BID and downtown Helena a really great relationship in, in sovereign which is another business locally this is a one of the videos they produced around the sixth ward. Um, this is uh, an update on how the independent was constructed and put together as well. Um, cotton top pastries and last 10 mile. These are all businesses that are our Helena grown businesses. And they're also really great conversations around the investments the community makes in itself. So when, uh, Cotton Top Bakery talks about the need to purchase a new oven. She talks about how it was cloud funded, that the community actually helped her fund because there's such an investment by the community in its small business. Also, the Sixth Ward in particular in the railroad district is an interesting um, piece as it shares with the mayor uh, what the, the overall feel of the area is like, and we continue to, and I look forward to continuing this conversation, this, these kinds of videos into what it looks like to be a business here and what is an opportunity. We have a, uh, a long time um, business within the Montana area who is 
working pretty aggressively to bring themselves as a satellite here to have a pretty exciting location in the railroad district. And I look forward to, um, and not only myself, but MBAC um, and our community development team have been working to help cite them as well as uh, provide the tools they need to be successful when moving here. So thank you, Mayor, for your time here on this video. It's, and I, as I shared, um, this was brought out and sent out to you all. And we'll, we'll be finishing up this week with our partners. La, uh, another part of this, this tool is the recruitment tool itself. What uh, is amazing is the general, uh, excuse me, the geographical informational systems team, the GIS team. Uh, that IT has offered to us. This team has helped launch our, our recruitment tool. This recruitment tool is an opportunity for us to reach out and share. If you're a business in Montana and you're interested in moving, relocating, or being cited here as a satellite, it shows properties available to you. And then it offers by way of uh, location, more detail around the infrastructure available to you, education of those living here and the types of schools we offer. We also have information on incentives like opportunity zones, where those are located. Very excited to be able to share some of these, these tools that help on the workforce side, even share what kinds of um, education and training is available, what kinds of occupations are here, not only so that you can move your business, but also what know what kinds of customers you can expect to see visiting you and whether your targeted customer is, is, is actually here for you. Uh, those are all free services that we'll be able to offer. Many small businesses don't have access to this kind of a tool and it helps reduce the overhead in moving and improve the opportunity of knowing what it will be like if they were in Helena. We'll be recording uh, a sampling of what that looks like um, and how to use the tool coming up soon. We've also been improving our mapping internally with that same GIS team showing where we're, the city is making investments, where our infrastructure improvements are going in and also sharing any other um, zoning and permitting so that someone coming in can see that the the city is actively pursuing its improvements and where, where its activities lay. So if someone were interested, they found that they have a, a customer here, they have a location uh, to put their business and what it would take to get permitted. And last, it shares what it's like to live here. So these, these videos from the Sovereign team and a, a number of other businesses within Helena our stories about what it's like living here and building your business here. So not only is it to show how this community supports itself and, and supports its small businesses, but also what it's like to live here and have a business here. And last, of course, our connection to our, our partners. So the Chamber, Downtown Helena, and back in our tourism business improvement district. I'm very excited to start recruitment, start reaching out and really um, having Helena be the what it has been from uh, the meetings that I've had with our citizens that is the, the focus of many of my conversations when I, I started the conference so that reach out and which you all shared your contacts with me. Those conversations of uh, what it's like to be in Helena, what's most cherished, and um, what it looks like. And it, it is just Montana, and that's a pretty wonderful thing. Just a couple of other highlights, and then I'll open it up to um, next, next where I'm, I'm focusing efforts. So just to remind you all that we completed that fiscal stability analysis. We'll be focusing in on our financial policies, these specific policies, and then this is the inventory that was completed. These are also, uh, there is also a focus on operations and planning. And um, those, I'm very excited to implement that work in the coming months with um, finance team who is building out our fantastic human, re our, our fantastic financial systems. As you know, it was green screen 
and function keys. So we're really excited to move into a system where we can actually export and begin some more complex conversations around the financial status of the city. So some recommendations on priorities. Um, so if I could think over parts and pieces of what the next year would look like um, and some thoughts for you all in uh, focus. Obviously we have a new commission that will be in place. Uh, want to start the conversation around being the strongest capital city in the nation and implementing a resiliency framework. Um, as part of that, I, I'll take a moment here if you have questions you want to ask me, but I'll I'll take you to the next page, which is this um, performance measurement work plan conversation, and then the last piece of resiliency framework build out. If if you have any questions, I'll I'll stop here for a second and ask if you have any questions of me. I think you're on mute, uh, Mayor. Do you see a, there we go. Yeah, I don't know why, why this new process, but anyway. <laughs> on one of your slides, you had airport and IT on a tra tra trajectory. What do yeah. you mean? Sure. Um, so there were two, <clears throat> these were the two um, interagency agreements that we had been working on. The first was the airport's um, revisions to the airport MOU, the memorandum of understanding. We've completed those conversations, well, nearly completed those conversations between the airport and the uh, city and we'll be bringing the, the language forward to you all so you can see what that um, relationship has um, revised and identified specifically on the airport. As you'll recall, there was the um, federal dollars and the impact that um, they receive a significant amount of federal dollars and that they had not been paying assessments. And those assessments had not been paid because of an interpre interpretation by uh, uh, and through a lawsuit from the um, LAX airport. In LAX, they had been charging um, and been charged by the city to address um, assessments. Those assessments were, instead of being for activities on the property, were general pooled. And those general pooling of those dollars was the actual federal issue specific to um, whether or not they can use transportation dollars out of the airport on general uses within the community. That kind of general use results in an impact on um, whether or not they will receive federal dollars in the future. So our assessments translated over were that the assessments that we were putting on to the airport were viewed as being general pooled back into the larger community that would then result in not only with the dollars a direct use on the airport, they were not, um, they believed clarified as to the services. So, just as a quick example, and I'll, we'll be bringing this uh, back to you all as a good example. We clarified who would be managing maintenance, for example, on the airport road. We have said that it cost a specific amount to maintain it, and that was the assessment. And they said, well, we don't actually need you to do that, and we'll do the maintenance ourselves. And, and that's the kind of solution that was offered up so that we weren't having the argument any longer and the airport is not utilizing those services with which we believe they're not paying for. So those also result in us asking the question, is the street assessment correctly calculated? And that along with all of our assessments is being evaluated. On the IT side, the IT MOU in particular, the cost is fairly high, as you all know, and the IT team itself the MOU, the agreement between the city and the county on IT, it really underscored 
the difference between what we believed IT should be doing and what actually is done. For example, um, we just clarified this in our last meeting with the IT board. IT itself has always been, as I understand it, <laughs> a, an organization that provides base service of security and maintaining access to primary cross organization services. They are not though uh, an opportunity for moving and looking forward. And that means they are not the ones who will implement new technology unless it's shared across both. The greatest example I can give is the ERP, the um, finance system being built out right now to improve <laughs> our finance documentation. That project we had to hire a project manager to complete because we don't have that leadership within our IT team. Uh, they will be, that project manager will be the person who leads us through the implementation of the new finance system. So the trajectory is coming back to you all with some specific answers. So what is it that we're doing on the airport to reach resolution? And what is it that we're doing with the IT team to get to better clarity on what it is we expect and what they actually offer? And whether or not that's a reasonable price that we pay is the second page. And that's really what I'm looking for, Jane, our, our new uh, IT director, to help me understand. And that is, are we paying a reasonable price for the level of work that we receive beyond base? And if it's beyond base service, what is it that we're missing? And that's the, the kind of information I couldn't get previously, which I'm really excited to, to see out of our new director. Does that help answer the question on that one? Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Dean. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a question, and I think this relates a little bit to what you, I think, are about to talk about, but um, also on this slide. Um, so thinking about um, the pace of all of the work. Um, I'm wondering, you know, what are you thinking about in terms of how we can better pace ourselves, you know, for staff and organizational um, sustainability while also improving, I think, our, you know, effectiveness in, in providing those like quality, very basic city services, um, the things that we have to do no matter what. And, um, and how those two things interact. Sure, yeah, you're right. Um, the work plan and um, outcome measurement really begins that conversation. So I, I will go more into that um, after this slide, but uh, the pace, I uh, had a really good, good conversation with one of the leadership team members last week. And it was a really good example of, um, of what has been the method for a, a long period of time that the pace has been set around, and that is responding to what is perceived to be a crisis as opposed to um, thoughtful, long-term planning and implementing. So the ADA trail is a good example, I believe, of um, not building in the front end more clarity around what the community could expect from us. And then when something changed we used our social capital in a way that we didn't need to so that's the first and that was a crisis so that derails our time and then the pace begins to to increase and you'll see a flurry of information going on because the team is is very concerned with a a, a crisis that's presented itself so the the hope is to get ahead of the crisis we've been for four years through so many city managers and interims that it's really hard not to have a crisis in just about almost every area where there hasn't been any movement. So uh, interims don't want to make decisions. They want to keep moving forward based service. And there are a lot of activity. The airport and IT are, are two of them. There are a lot of areas where there's just not been sufficient support. There's not been enough time and there's not been a lot of focus. That's because of uh, the city manager not being there to hold them, hold the work focus of the commission's desire at the front end. I know there was frustration with the team not delivering on issues. The commission, it, it's, a, it's a really interesting conversation because 
the city manager holds the team accountable and I'm accountable to you all. So without a position like the manager in between to help move the work forward, it's very difficult for the team to translate exactly where it is you want to go. Um, so that second part is this translation of where we want to go. That's where I need your help and I look forward to working on. I'll share to you moving forward. The pace has a lot to do with the expectations of this mission. Thank you. you Go ahead, Commissioner Logan. You have the floor, Commissioner Logan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll try this quickly. My uh, connection's kind of unstable, but um, Rachel, the economic development site, how live is it? I mean, is it being pushed out at this point or is it is that a future, um, have a future timeline? Yes, uh, my hope was to launch it in April. <laughs> the reality of, uh, to your point, uh, Commissioner Dean, like that's a reasonable pace. This, this project is a multifaceted project and uh, now we have such great partnership with our friends in the BID and MBAC that I want to make sure they're bought in on all the messages as they've been outlined on this page. They're a significant part to play in this. So uh, while the city stood up and, and paid for um, and Jake designed and wrote what the page looks like, all of that um, copy, all the wording are from me and based on the commission's conversation, the conversations I've had with the commission's um, contacts in the community of what Helena is and what Montana looks like as a ref, as Helena of a reflection of Montana. Um, those are both items that I want to make sure that those those partners agree with. So my hope is to have them in the next couple of weeks and have it live so that we can start recruitment in a more deliberate way. So it's not live yet. It will be soon. And the chamber has been an excellent partner as well. I don't want to forget them at all. Is that okay, great. So I will share the next screen if you're ready. I want to share what the outcome that there's a there's a translation between the work plan to the performance measurement and then performance measurement to resilience outcome measurement. So I know that is jargony, so <laughs> I'll try to, to make that less so by just showing you what I mean. So uh, what you all have, we have talked about is um, hoping you can see the, the three primary um, goals, uh, the, the strategic outcomes. Do you see that, Mayor? Okay. Yes, we can see it. Great. So these are, this is just the Excel spreadsheet, um, which is loaded with the primary um, workbook of the work plan itself. And once I send this out to the team, they will upload their um, percent completes. This, are, if you go into the budget itself and you look at not only the actions within the work plan, but also the major projects within the capital, as well as the vehicle purchases and staffing. These are all part of the work plan. The work plan itself, um, you'll see I've, I've just pre-filled. Don't worry, the team has, I'm sure, better stats. This is just my example at this point. They haven't actually filled this in yet, um, but they'll give you a percent complete so you can see how far along they are in, for example, the LED retrofit, uh, lighting retrofit, that, or the, um, um, parks wells or the additional well project. Those will all be consolidated into a, a workbench and you'll get the color coding of what exactly is the status and how, how things are going. So you'll know what the activity looks like and um, whether or not it's completed, if it's on trajectory to be completed and which areas are specifically uh, needing more attention. So we'll have that to you in the next, um, my hope, I'll send this out tonight to the team so that they can fill in their percent completes 
for each of the three tabs and then you receive not only this summary bench but also the per work um, action the update so you'll have a clear understanding of how what you funded through the budget is being done uh, being worked on and then any specific updates that you would you would need so that you're continuing to see that over time now that these are just like outcomes like do this check check they're just check boxes but it doesn't necessarily communicate movement towards addressing something and that's really what I'm hoping to do with the next iteration of uh, performance measurement for, for the community and, the, and for the city. And that's moving us from just being measuring tasks and getting them done to that movement. And so we'll be taking these wild goals of the team and actually beginning what is a, a greater conversation with the commission around what does it mean to be a resilient community? So I'm Give me a second to walk you through what may come off as being kind of a, a non-linear conversation to something linear and uh, less spatial. So um, just going to start here with this, this quiet, it's called the re, um, results oriented management and accountability. And results oriented management and accountability is a method employed within the social services area, in particular, the community services block grant, not the community development, but the community services block grant program. And what it does is it evaluates a person in their status um, in movement out of poverty. And it asks them, what is their employment like? What's their education like? What's their housing like? And what's their income and health? So these are individual cases. Those individual cases are then translated into outcomes. So where are they in the spectrum of service specific to their employment, education? Begins a conversation around how do you move someone from being vulnerable, which means they have a part-time job and are employed with minimum wage, into being stable and moved to full-time employment and at a minimum wage with benefits. Those are all definitions. To specific to how someone can become a thriving individual. That kind of a survey and an outcome matrix is very common in that program. It is a model for easily translating what is very difficult conversation so that someone can move through and be more successful. So they understand where when they're vulnerable or in crisis, how to help support them and, and deliver some service needs that, that move them into a thriving area. Now the same, I do believe, the same applies to organizations, that organizations are, are living organism. They are like a person. And in this resilient conversation, we would be talking about our resilience, our ability to be successful and into the future and beginning a conversation around how we can be um, more resilient into the future. So this questionnaire would be sent out and it's still in, in its early works based on the, the community and the conversation that I need to have with the, the directors, which is coming. I know they're really excited for tomorrow's meeting based on what I've just said. So <laughs> they know that I'm going to be challenging them to have a, another conversation around what, what it looks like to be successful here. But again, coming back to the resiliency framework, we have adapting to our changing climate. So how prepared are we for some drastic conditions like droughts, wildfires, earthquakes, population increase, another pandemic? This would be the question that we would ask you, commissioners, what as well of the new commissioners, how well do you think we're doing? Um, how well are we at pursuing diversity and vibrancy? Can anyone find a job? Can anyone find a home or a place to live? So these begin places for us to have conversations that help delve deeper into whether or not we need to focus in on and what we need to focus in on um, as a team delivering what you expect. Ultimately, this kind of conversation begins this, this outcome-based conversation for Helena. And this is where I need to spend time with the team what does it mean for us to say that we've adapted to our changing in cl uh, climate? So I will ask the directors, okay, what does it mean to be thriving in this? And then this is just an example. What does it mean to be thriving 
at adapting to our climate change. So that would mean that we're prepared for any emergency, drought, soil erosion. What does that actually mean? That's the question I would have for the team. Safe, it would be we're prepared for three of the six types of emergencies. Stable two, and then vulnerable two of the six types, and then in crisis means that we're not prepared. So the idea is that the team spends the time analyzing what it really means to, to Helena. I put it in this method because it is a conversation where we, I really want to help the, the commission clarify what, when they bring in new commissioners, what each has an expectation and level out in a retreat environment, what each other sees. And then when you're in agreement on what each other sees by way of, of stability or, or in crisis or thriving, then we can narrow in on the work that we need to do in a greater area. Um, the team can implement within those, those wild goals more work that's specific to, uh, to Helena and moves us into a resilient outcome. And we can show you where we are between prevent, uh, being stable and in crisis or in um, vulnerability. Those, those areas become even more of the, the point of conversation as opposed to thriving or safe. So helping us narrow in on where it is we need the most focus, I think that is the most difficult conversation that, that hasn't been had. And that is where do we need to be focused? So I think Commissioner Dean, you, who had asked, how do we know um, where do we need to be focused in on um, as compared to just providing base service? And that's my hope is that I help you all communicate amongst each other what you think is most important so that we understand where we can be better at providing response to, to what you'd like to see happen. Um, that is the next page of work that I anticipate um, bringing forward to you all. And so going to go to my last slide here, which is this uh, the strongest capital city. Again, that resiliency framework, implement the uh, strategic planning and this outcome measurement. Uh, really empowering the neighborhoods in this herd on the vine versus fact and fiction, uh, improving the what maybe someone has published that might not be fact, but also needs to be clarified or is just incorrect and we need to fix. So doing a better job there, but also helping the team feel comfortable that they can work with the community to solve those local issues together. And then uh, last, helping the new commission uh, get settled in and continuing this team leadership and then supporting the, the clerk of the commission in the teamwork process as well. One of the gaps that I shared to uh, some of you is that the evaluation of our human resources includes the clerk of the commission. And what I would like to do is offer to you all the opportunity to study the, the position itself so that we can improve the pay. I believe that position is underpaid, but it's not because of um, a lack of time spent evaluating the, the pay itself, but instead the, um, the level of responsibility of that office is pretty significant. And the, the pay, I believe, doesn't reflect that. So I want to be able to support the commission because that is another position that works for you all um, in helping uh, lead that out to, um, to you all that what kind of pay would be realistic and the uh, level of uh, responsibility that's really assigned to that position. And, Level of responsibility plays into the pay structure overall. We really haven't had an evaluation yet, and I look forward to having Renee and the human resources team along with our leadership team talk about a real, um, a really up-to-date pay system that reflects responsibility as opposed to um, what we have right now, which is a system that may reward more on how long you've been in the organization. And that, that becomes even more difficult for someone who is new and has some excellent skills, and yet they're stuck at the bottom of the pay range. So uh, I'm very excited for the next step. That's, and that, Mayor and Commission, is my summary of where I am at. I'm certainly uh, 
if you have any questions um, that I can offer any answers, more answers to, let me know. Otherwise, I'm very thankful for um, all of the community, the developers, the businesses, our community partners, you for your patience and your time. This has been there uh, many, uh, many, many conversations. We've had many conversations where I feel like I'm listening as much as I can to provide a response that is thoughtful and is uh, clarifies what might be confusion or misinterpretation or just real success that we've not done a good job of clarifying or, or pointing out. So I think there's still more work to be done there and I, I look forward to continuing this work and this job as well. So thank you very much again for the work here. I've enjoyed every minute and uh, my family's here. I call it home and I've moved my parents here. So we're, we're here and I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Madam Manager. And um, at this time, I'll open it for public comments. Do we have any comments from the public? Uh, Commissioner, do you have your hand up? I do, Mr. May. I had one more question, but I, well, you have time for that. At this time, it's for the public, Commissioner. Yes. I, I just wanted to get my hand up so Danae could unmute me. <laughs> I'll make sure you'll be the first. Any comments from the public? Madam Manager, I mean, Madam Clerk, do we have anybody with raised hands somewhere we don't see? I know... Uh, uh, the clerk is having problem with their computer. Mr. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, I apologize. I've had to switch to my phone. So this is even more awkward than it was before. Um, I have no raised hands at this time from the public. Okay. And so at this time, then we will, Madam Manager, we'll close the meeting to the public and, uh, now, let me make sure I got the uh, MCA in pursuant to section 2-3-203, subsection 3, MCA, we will close the meeting for individual privacy and we'll reopen upon completion. Mayor, Mayor could, could I just jump in real quick? Is Please. It, is it the manager's expectation that uh, the meeting from here on out would be closed? Madam Manager? Uh, Mayor, no, I actually hadn't expected that. That, um, no, nope, uh, if there was any other feedback, I'm more than happy to receive it publicly. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Dane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had um, one final question and it's not anything specific to some of the things that you discussed, but um, I think this was a really helpful kind of um, check in and, um, you know, spot where we can pause and kind of reflect on the last year. So I really appreciate um, everything that you've presented tonight um, and your last year of work. Um, so given that you are one year in, a little over one year in, um, and we're about to head into a new year, hopefully a year without um, COVID um, kind of <laughs> Uh, being involved in everything we do, which I think has made the last year and a half extremely difficult. Um, I'm curious, um, just if you can maybe reflect for us, um, one, what um, frustrates you, and two, what inspires you um, about the city and in your role as city manager? Yeah, so thank you, that's such a great question. Um, the frustration that uh, I run into is the um, backstory that impedes our ability to communicate with each other and not only the commission and the staff, but also in the community. I think I know that um, even the, the most recent conversations that have been in front of the commission where there's been difficulty there's assumptions around what's happened and even um, 
incorrect information that's been shared to me. Those pieces are really difficult because they affect our ability to build social capital. Um, social capital being relationships and trust. So it's, it's really hard to, um, that's my frustration, to have conversations when people are bringing um, more to the table than I'm able to reflect on because they're, they have more experience in a different way that may have been either positive or negative that I don't and I'm not aware of. So those are, those are difficulties. There's assumptions, I think, sometimes from uh, partners that, and even- Madam Manager, I think you, uh, you were breaking up. We didn't hear the last maybe 30 seconds of your- uh, Shoot, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and if it continues, I'll take my- you know. Here, okay. Okay, how about that? That might help. Um, so it's just that. So that's the frustration is the, the baggage that comes along to a conversation that impedes the outcome. And then um, what inspires me are the citizens who are so excited about their priority issue. And they come to the city either um, worried and concerned or excited and in support. So. Those are, um, those are exciting to me because that means that there's interest. And when there's interest, there's potential to do um, really good work together. And when there's that, that kind of good work is something that um, I want, I want to support in the community. I want to support the commission, helping the community move forward. So that's exciting to me. Thanks. Thank you. Sure. Any other, com yes, Commissioner Logan. Commissioner Logan. Yo, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, real quickly, Rachel, I, get, I just got to say thanks um, for the presentation tonight, and thank you for the 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 what you've done over the course of the last year. Um, I think that sort of pie chart really illustrates the what you've done in in the base expectations that we had for you initially in terms of relationships and, and building relationships with the commission, with, as you call it, the team. Um, I think that's, that's great that they are now the team. I mean, when you first came to town and started calling them the team, as I've said before, it sounded quite awkward and it, I think it fits now and, and, and that's because you've established that relationship with them. And, and then as importantly with, uh, with the community and, and I think you've done a really, really good job with that. And, and that's enabled you to move on as, as you pointed out to, um, you know, establish goals in the future. And, and so um, I, I, I just um, can't say thanks enough. So, I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner. Any others? Uh, Madam Manager, uh, we do see a lot of improvement since you've been here. We thank you for that. And um, I know uh, it seems like we're still struggling with customer service. Because I've received, uh, you know, quite a few, uh, 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 like the last couple of weeks, we've been struggling with the Vandalay, this, and the Taco Bell, and uh, developers saying they're not getting their calls uh, 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 answered to. And then within the last week, we see they were all settled. Taco Bell is moving on Vandalay and the developer thinks I'm improving. What happened? Thank you. That, thank you for the opportunity to share on that, Mayor. The, uh, uh, it, it always is timely, I suppose, how things work out. We've gotten 
many, many more projects than the mall project moved forward. Uh, the, we've had a, a significant number of projects completed since I started in October. Um, our Shodair, for example, is an excellent example of a project with the same company that is moving along just fine. The distinction is um, there's baggage. <laughs> and uh, the baggage started well before I got here. And um, the developer shared to you what that was. And that was the manager previously had um, worked out expectations. The, the developer also was employing some tactics, which I shared to you all last time we met, that implied that commissioners had had conversations and agreements with them. Now, Friday, he shared that those were not the case. The commission did not make commitments like that. So, uh, what I would say about the development at the mall site, Mayor, is that, and I think any developer would share, um, but I'm not one, but any developer would share that uh, when we're asked to help, we do. I spent four months, my team spent four months supporting Vandalay, and in particular, um, the, the road itself. The frustration with that project is the baggage. Going back to the question asked um, by Commissioner Dean, the baggage was um, the implication that we would ignore what had been agreed to, which is by the commission, which is enforcement of the fire code. And we've offered up, and I had offered up many solutions, and I, I put that in an email to Commissioner O'Loughlin. Those Disconnects were not the responsibility of the staff. Those disconnects were the developer. And that's that's the reality of the baggage that came with that project when I got here. There was a, a big conversation of what, when I first got here around um, a very difficult conversation between one of the employees and a commissioner in that first meeting in January. And that first meeting in January was around the mall. That 30 minute conversation with one employee in particular was a very difficult conversation around Vandalay, the mall site, and the renewal, the, the development and urban, what is it, the redevelopment agency. <coughs> that conversation ties in that, that, and I know, I know um, I'm not sure, do you, do you know which conversation I'm referring to, Mayor? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that one. That's all tied to the same piece of property. Now, how many other projects have you seen across town where you've gotten this much response? How much? How many of those have you heard? I, I feel like you, you know, whenever you're reached to, those items are put to the top and we move those forward. This one, as I shared, this one has some baggage that resulted in some real frustration. That frustration uh, was discussed on Friday morning with the developers and uh, an apology was shared to us by the developer because we were and had been very flexible and we are not implementing what they believe to be a very strict interpretation. What was happening was that key partner, key, not, key individuals, not partner, key individuals in those conversations we're not implementing what we were asking. That's what was happening. And unfortunately, it played out. So what you may perceive as customer service is not so much the same. There's uh, some baggage. There's some old, uh, really difficult conversations and some sometimes some mistruths that were shared that ultimately impacted whether or not something moved. And that was, that was really detrimental. I think that um, I'm very hopeful, as I shared to an, in an email today to you all, I'm very hopeful because it wasn't the staff, frankly, commissioner or, and mayor, uh, mayor and commissioners, that it wasn't the staff that changed, it was the change in the developer. And listening that we weren't trying to be obstructive, we weren't trying to be difficult. We were actually having different conversations than they thought we were. 
which was to be helpful and help them get through the process. That's what we do with all of the development projects. We sit down with them, we talk through when we have issues on development elements, and then when they come in to make dedications or openings, they're not surprised. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Yeah, Mayor, I just had um, maybe one comment and a question. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I I um I appreciate Mayor um you you raising that question and um I think it's you know it's probably more than just one or two conversations. I think there's just sort of continued sort of questions about um, the city's role in, in communicating with, with partners and stakeholders and what that looks like. Um, I appreciate the point I think that the city manager made about sort of working, um, working with stakeholders in finding solutions. I can't remember how you phrased it exactly, but um, rather than sort of like being the sole, the sole one to, to find the solution, but working, working with the community and identifying and working towards a solution. I think that the, you know, the question I have for you, city manager, is sort of what does that look like? Um, whose role is it um, to really do the outreach? Because I think in some of these circumstances, what, what at least I'm hearing is that it, it stakeholders can can wait for months before they hear from staff on an issue. Um, it often, I think, sometimes requires a member of the commission to sort of raise it. And then, um, then it looks like the staff will, will move toward finding a solution. I personally would love to, to see it where we don't have to bring it up, right? That when an email comes through with a concern about, um, you know, a particular city issue that there is a mechanism for communication between staff and community partners on that issue. So I, I'm just curious if you if you have thoughts on sort of what does that look like? You know, your your concept of shifting toward working with community stakeholders and identifying solutions. What is the role of of your office and staff in, in, in doing that. Great, no, that's a great, that is the primary, I think one of our, one of our greatest communication problems right now, Commissioner, I think you've nailed on the head. There is a significant gap between what we hear from the community and that timing related to the issue and then ultimately whether or not the issue has been addressed in some other way in another location. So what may turn out to be an issue in one part of town may now become an issue in a different part of town, but they're actually connected. And so what happens is that uh, homelessness, for example, the uh, camping in town, where we hear uh, concerns in the downtown area and they'll move to a different part of town those are actually interconnected because of, of how things are, are uh, being addressed in the community. Those disconnects are real. I, I really appreciate you pointing this out because the um, be heard, the uh, heard on the vine, those are all opportunities for submittal of, of questions and information, but we don't necessarily know all of the comments and concerns that are coming up. So my hope is to improve first how there, how we're getting information. There's, there's a work request, <laughs> a service request, and then there's an actual um, community concern that needs addressed broadly. Those are two different activities. This broadly conversation is the one that's the most difficult. The homelessness, for example, that's a very broad conversation that has at multiple entry points. Most of the time, we're getting those pieces of information through the mayor and the commissioner email. That mayor and commissioner email is one of the most difficult because 
unless they see see me i actually don't feel comfortable responding because they're they're calling they're reaching out to you all if i can move service requests and in, in that syncing up of service requests to something that we're working on as a team with jake to talk through on the my helena app be heard all of those tools actually are shared amongst one company that we're trying to synchronize so that citizens can see when a, when a service request is turned in on the app, it's reflected on BeHerd, the same on BeHerd. So citizens can go to one place and see it all. That's just the electronic. But then the second part of this is the communication around concerns. So you all receive our updates. Um, those updates come, and those are the higher level issues that we're working on. What's a crisis and what is service requests become two different conversations um, those there will continue to be a need for that conversation to be addressed but dodge dodge avenue is another example of one where excuse me um, very difficult conversation uh, very much an argument between two property owners lack of uh, cohesion there but that we can help join them in a different way in a different conversation to solve the issue without having to legislate the solve um, until i've had enough time with the community i couldn't pick out what was happening by way of um, the city solve it versus the city help in supporting the neighborhood support it so um, that neighborhood solve there was a program uh, that i'm thinking of that really helped in that communication it was called a uh, community oriented governance and it was focused on bringing staff out and into the community to answer questions publicly in a routine manner. So through a network that includes, um, for example, the neighborhood um, HCC, it's already a network of neighborhood sections where there's a structure in place. We're just not using it to, to help communicate and capture the needs that, that are in the community and bring them forward and being addressed with the team. So, it's not just the police officer who's answering a question. It's also um, the parks and Rec uh, parks and recreation manager. It's also um, um, public works and utilities. It doesn't also have to be just the director. It can be someone within and inside the, the departments themselves who are empowered to speak to the community so that there's not only one person that's always looked to. Those are opportunities that we, we have. Um, COVID adds a layer that's, that puts us at each other and away from each other. And it's really upon us and, and really a challenge for, for all of us to reach back out and, and support that cohesiveness within the, the city. So that, so yes, the city, each of our employees, I do expect to have a role in helping solve issues as opposed to just fix it, solve it not um, just address what today holds. But then there's the second layer of um, what's the commission's role in that too. And I think there's a, a, a really difficult place that you all are put in because we're hired full-time to address concerns, but we don't always know what might be happening in your world. So um, in your world, you might get a lot of asks that we are unaware of. And so your participation in those neighborhood conversations become a critical part as well. You have the uh, boards and commissions that you've gotten, your boards and committees. They're a, a specific voice around a specific issue. They all have a role in this far bigger neighborhood network. So that's how I, I'm envisioning it as a, an ongoing reach from our departments to a neighborhood network where people say, hey, I've got this issue, I need this addressed, or we've got this whole neighborhood issue. I'll give you another example of one that just happened um, last week. Um, citizens um, in the west um, western side of town here were concerned about uh, snow removal and what was going to happen when their vehicles aren't, up. it's a, a very small <laughs> street, oftentimes on this west side and so when there's snow removal and people are parked there we're berming in cars and uh, it really does require more than towing by the city it's actually an agreement within the citizens on that street that they'll move their cars off within a reasonable amount of time that's 
what being a neighbor is about. So notice your neighbor who isn't getting the snow out. Why do you want to help them? But then also, what's your role in helping make sure that, that the snow is removed? And that's the kind of, these are the things that's a, it's a partnership really between the staff and the community. You do this, we do this, and we work together as, as a cohesive neighborhood as opposed to just delivering service. Commissioner Lafayette. You have the floor, Commissioner. Yep, thank you. Sorry, I was just trying to get unmuted. Um, sorry, Danae. Uh, I um, thank you for that answer. And I, um, I, I'm glad you brought up Dodge because I think um, I, I think that is sort of one of the examples I, I've been thinking about, you know, the, the so and I think it's also helpful clarification as to what what you you think the role of the commission is in communicating with stakeholders and what you think the city's role is, right? Because if what I'm hearing is that, you know, if it goes to the mayor and commission, the city staff, we are we will not respond. That's helpful to know, right? Um, and I think separately, the extent to which there's communications happening with us, right? Understanding that that is a role that we play in the community. Um, you know, that email was sent to us in May. And, and, I, and I think there was maybe perhaps another follow-up email. You know, I reached out to you, I think in July at that point, I think they had not, maybe they had had one correspondence with the staff, but really didn't result in any sort of movement. Um, and then I think by the time we got it on to a commission, we then heard from, from you that the city would embark in sort of working with the various stakeholders and adjacent property owners. I, why can't that conversation happen in May, right? Like we're six months, six months gone um, from those original, original communications. And I think that's just sort of the expectation, right? That like staff isn't going to respond. It's now incumbent on us to bring it forward. Um, in many instances, community members are not hearing anything from staff. So better articulating what the role of and responsibility is of, of your office and of staff, I think could, could help mitigate some of the frustration that sometimes we hear. Um, you know, I think the mall site is another example. Um, when, when we tabled that, um, that original consideration, I think there was sort of anticipation from staff in their communication to the commission that there was a, potentially another proposal being put forward and that there would be conversations. My understanding is that the applicants were not made aware that the staff was recommending denial until that our packet became available publicly. So I think those are just some examples of um, we can do better, right? And in, in having these communications up front that I think could help um, could help clarify both the roles. And also, I think, again, to your point, working toward a shared uh, solution um, where it is not necessarily just uh, an absolute no, you know, it's up to you um, to go find another solution, but what's the, what's the city's role too in trying to find that solution? So I appreciate that. I appreciate that being a point and some of the examples you brought up. And um, yeah, I think it's something that we can continue to strive to do better on. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments from the commission? Madam Manager, I see you. you got yeah, your... thank you. No, I def there's definitely nuance in each of those examples. They're not like for like, but there's definitely a common theme and that's the place from which we start. And so I, <clears throat> spending this time to observe and hear how information comes in. There's also a really, in Dodge in particular, um, some, it's, it's what the conversation is between each person is very different. Uh, so your conversation with the owners at Headwaters and at the bank was different than the individual who owns the property who has the pizza on it. There, uh, please, that, that conversation was so very different for the two of them. It was really, um, really important to hear them both from their own points of view. It is very obvious that there have been very few conversations between the team 
and the citizens in a way that results in them hearing what's needed and from both sides, not just the one who's complaining, but the one who also has an opportunity to make a solution happen. Those are, that's the space that we, I would really like our team to begin to have that, that conversation because it becomes more of a partnership as opposed to um, just providing service. And that method is really common. And again, the having a, someone pointed out as a manager and say, no, we're gonna change the method. So just in the last two months, that is ob that has become incredibly obvious because there's so much fact and fiction that goes in to how the result comes out and it becomes very difficult and I can see how it becomes very difficult for you all uh, because you're getting sometimes half truths, sometimes non-truths, also sometimes all facts and not enough information. So those are all the myriad of examples of how things are you all are trying to solve something for the community and we're, we've not done enough research, we've not talked to others. I'm absolutely in agreement that um, it's just a method that is different, that we've not employed. And I'm, I look forward to working with the team. I know that they are eager to use it. There's also this place of, of a lack of um, security in, in wanting to step and overstep a conversation with a commissioner without a commissioner there. So the commissioner brings it forward, they don't have the solve, the commissioner might want to be the person who solves it. So there's just a whole host of layers of things that um, I'm just going to have to really work with the team to break, break some of those old habits so that they feel comfortable first starting with just call them, find out exactly what's happened, and then we can start breaking it apart and coming up with different solutions. And now it may ultimately, in the case of a dodge, we may ultimately come back to the same place where we started, which is this is the actual best benefit um, to the community, which is to open up that street. But um, they, those, those three property owners ultimately are the ones that need to be engaged in the conversation. Um, and we, we didn't do that yet. So that's what I've been doing. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Well, no questions from the commission. Let me see the agenda states. Public comments. Is there anyone in the public wishes to address the commission? Madam Clerk. I'm, I'm looking Mayor. at the full house right here, right? Mr. Mayor, I have no uh, hands raised in the meeting. I received no written public comment in the chat either. Okay, thank you. Commission directions, commission discussion direction to the city manager. Madam manager, I don't know if we have any direction here, but what say you? Well, I'm, I'm not sure that I've, um, I've heard support for the work we've been doing or that the work um, moving forward is, is there for the, the next um, outcomes-based resilient matrix and survey. So I just want to make sure that if you're in support of continuing forward within that outcome base, that um, the commission is on board for me to build that out so that when the new commissioners come in, you can have the survey and, and have another conversation. I just want to make sure that we're in that space on um, my understanding of what next steps and those suggestions that I'd offer up, offered up to you all uh, you're in support of. So those neighborhood conversations, the greater development of those um, resource groups for citizens, and then um, this outcome matrix. And of course, support and those commission clerk. And those are still being worked on. So, commissioners, do you have anything other than that? Madam Manager, I guess not. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Dean. That's okay. Um, I, I guess I, um, and I think this is the first time we've seen kind of the draft of that outcomes-based piece. Um, 
you know, I think more inf- the more information, the better. I know that I every week refer to um, that work plan that that we received um, with the. Is it me or you, you were disconnected just now? You were you were frozen. I can. I'll turn off my video. How's that? Maybe that'll help. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I, I, I mean, I'm definitely in favor of having more information as to, um, you know, where we are in, in particular projects. Um, I do know one thing that I'm going to be thinking a lot about and alluded to this in one of my first questions, um, in this next year is really making sure that we are, um, we're, we're doing the basics really well, um, and providing high quality service. Um, I know that, you know, we want to continue to move forward. And I think that we've, we've done a pretty good job of, of keeping things on, on the radar. I know things have been made more difficult with COVID over the last 18 months. Um, But, you know, I would say, especially for the commission, the more information, the better um, for me. Um, But I I do want to make sure that we you know, have a really clear understanding of what are, and I think these conversations will probably happen at the start of the year again too, you know, what are our big goals? For example, you know, getting a parks district. Um, what, if we are if we are working towards particular priorities, can we do all of these other things while also have providing high quality city services, um, like the basic ones? So that's just kind of where my thoughts are on that. But um, absolutely, like inf- the more information is always the better for us, I think, because we are not there all day, every day. Um, and, uh, you know, it's always helpful for me if I know where to just get the information instead of having to, you know, bother folks with lots of emails um, looking for it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Logan, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Insofar as the manager's question goes, uh, you know, relative to what she presented um, about the future, um, I'm generally comfortable with the direction and and, um, what she's hoping to accomplish. So yeah, I am supportive of it. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? All right, Madam Manager, do you have it? I believe so. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any final comments or questions from the Commission? All right. Well, at this time, the meeting is adjourned.